Well, I'm going to tell you about the Sun Bandit system. The Sun Bandit system is a hybrid hot water heating system using photovoltaic uh, solar as the primary source for the energy to produce the hot water and using grid electric for the backup or gas uh, or LP gas. Chris, there's uh, two disconnects up there. Which, what's the situation there? The disconnect to the left is coming, the power coming from the inverter, from the, from the solar panels on the roof. The disconnect to the right is coming from the grid, and that's our backup power. That, the one on the right, the, the grid connected one looks like it's in the, the disconnect, looks like it's off. Yes, once we, we installed this unit a few weeks back, and we haven't turned the electricity on to it, other than to make sure that it worked. And um, then we, uh, we turned it off and been heating solely using solar uh, for the last few weeks. Yeah, the LED display is showing you what watts are being produced by the solar panels and what power is being produced. Um, how hot can the water in the actual water heater uh, get? Well, what we, what we prefer to do is to store the water in the heater at 160 degrees using the solar to, as, as the free source of energy to produce that 160 degree water. We then have a metering device at the top where we can adjust our out, outward water temperature and the outward water temperature was set at 125 degrees. So we're actually in this 50 gallon model, we're actually able to store in excess of 70 gallons of equivalent uh, water at 160 degrees. And the, the tanks are very well insulated. Uh, on a sunny day, we'll get up to the 160 degrees fairly quickly. The unit will actually stop producing because it doesn't need any more at that time. And then we will uh, operate off that free heated water, losing about, at night, we lose about a quarter of a degree an hour at the most. So we still have plenty of hot water the next morning waiting on the sun to come back up. And we've been able to do that, you know, day after day for the last couple of weeks of having this thing installed. Usually uh, on domestic water, there, what is it usually the water temp uh, set at? Well, 120 to 125 degrees would be recommended. I know some people will run theirs as high as 130. What do we have uh, on top of the tank there? I assume that's some sort of mixing valve so that we can, have, we can store the water at a higher temperature? That's exactly right, Nick. That is a, uh, a thermostatic mixing valve. That, that mixes the cold water back in with the hot as it's exiting the heater so that we don't uh, get scald anybody. Right. So really, this is, uh, this is energy storage uh, in a real pure, uh, simplistic way. Correct. I mean, even off-grid, I mean, literally, we're off-grid, and we've been storing every day 160 degrees uh, water. Uh, this 50-gallon model, we've been storing 50 gallons of 160-degree water that we haven't depleted by the time the sun comes up the next day. Right, so we're, we're, you're really in a situation here where if we have several overcast days or there just isn't a lot of sun, you're still gonna have hot water because there's a grid connection with an electric element in the water heater. Correct, if, if we had several days of no sun or we had heavy snow uh, on the panels and we're unable to produce, we do have the grid backup, which then it will then operate like a high efficiency electric water heater. The, uh, the maintenance on the water heater, on the front of that, just underneath the Sun Bandit uh, logo at the top, it looks like there's some maintenance instructions. Uh, obviously, we'll offer a, uh, an annual or a semi-annual type maintenance uh, service product. Uh, what do we need to do as far as maintenance goes on this water heater? Well, I mean, as an as a end user, uh, that would be that would be to drain this heater down periodically depending on the hardness of water that you have in your home that's going to be the most critical on the annual maintenance we're going to look at connections of the solar panels the inverter we're going to look at uh, connections or actually take the heater apart and make sure that our connections to the elements are are good and disconnects are good um, I mean there's very little maintenance on the end user side other than, like I said, draining. And they do put a nice brass uh, boiler drain, which makes it very easy to flush this heater down periodically. And that, that depends on the hardness of water you have. It could be monthly, it could be three months that you need to, to flush that, that depo those deposits out.
This is the first one that you were involved with, uh, you know, kind of putting together the installation and so forth. Uh, what, what's your perspective on the installation? Well, Chris Whitaker uh, did the installation of this heater, and I think you're going to be talking to him shortly. Uh, from what I, I mean, it's a nice looking install, but um, honestly, from what I've seen, it's un, it's not much more different than installing any other water heater outside of the solar side. And on the solar side, that's the placement of your panels and how they're going to be placed. Uh, mine are going in a pergola uh, off the roof. Uh, they can go, there's just so many options for that. But as far as the heater itself, and then, you know, from the solar to the heater, we're just pulling wire. So it's, it's not a very invasive process. We're not running piping up to the roof. We're not, you know, we don't have heat exchangers and, and, and the way things used to be done. This is about as straightforward as you can get. Uh, we're, we're bringing the, the sun to the uh, panels, from the panels to the inverter on the roof or outside, and then we are bringing the power from those inverters straight to the heater, and that's it. It's that simple.